Okay, so I've inked most of the top half of my spot illustration. And I was careful to connect most lines so that I have complete, you know, solid shapes. And then one place I intentionally left a broken line because I actually think it looks kind of cool in the knife, but I'll show you how that affects coloring. And then there's an open edge here as well that I might need to close up. But then I can show you how we can do some basic preparation for, for digital coloring and how that's going to look. So if you get there before next class, the hope is to have our line art finished by next class, but also to have it set up for coloring. And it depends how complicated you want your coloring to be. But basically, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my background here because this is distracting. Basically, we want to fill every shape with a color, even the white shapes, right? So if I actually turn off my background layer and my onion skinning layer, you can see that we just have empty space in between our clean line art pixels. And we've made those pixels as strong as we can, as clean as we can, or as consistent towards what we want as possible. All of that is good. But now we want to add color to it, because right now we just have kind of a coloring book. So to do that digitally, we go ahead and we lock our line art layer so that we can't accidentally color on it. And I'll go ahead and relock my background. So we need a new layer to color. And so what I do is I set it up like a sandwich. I make a blank white layer that's not an onion skin layer. This is white at 100% underneath. And I call this white bread because we're making a sandwich. It is your foundational piece of bread. I then lock that layer. And our line art is our black bread. You don't need to layer or label your layers this way, but this is how I want you to think about it. So it's a sandwich with bread on top. That's your black line art and bread on the bottom, which is your white bread, just solid white. Now, how do you make a sandwich? Because a piece of white bread on, and a piece on, on the bottom of a piece of black bread is not a sandwich. You need to put stuff in the sandwich. And the most basic sandwich is just grilled cheese, right? Our cheese layer is what we call flat. And the flat color layer, no matter what kind of color you use, Here's an example. So these are called flattings, flatting colors. These are kind of wild, very uh, distinct pastel colors. And they just fill in every empty shape of the line art. Eventually, those flat colors will get covered with your black ink, and you get a finished illustration that then you might render up even more. So once you do your clean inking, you do your flat color, then you can start doing toning to your flat color, like that. But it all starts with just dropping in some flats. So this is the easiest way to do that. You click on your locked black bread layer and you use your magic wand. So let's say I wanna fill in the heart. Oh, I want to set it so it's contiguous. And I want to select the empty space with no feather. And even though that layer is locked, it will let me select it with the magic wand. So I'll show you. You can see that little heart selected. And now I move to the flat color layer 
I pick a color. I use the paint bucket and I drop it in. And it will fill only on the flat color layer where the cheese is. And then I can deselect. And it will look pretty good. It might have a slight pixeled edge really close up. And there's a way we can deal with that once we're done with all our flat coloring. But for right now, this is good. All right. So now I can think, well, are there other shapes I want to drop in like that? And you'll see an open shape. So let's say the skull, I want it to be kind of an ivoryish gray. So I can pick that color. Maybe like that. And then I can go to my black bread layer, use my magic wand, select it, then go to my flat color layer and drop it in. That's why it's so important to lock your black bread layer so you don't accidentally paint on your line art. And it drops it in. And it shows me ah, all of the the shapes that were open there. So maybe I didn't want my beard the same color as my skull, but that's okay. Watch what I can now do. I can now take my hard edged eraser in my flat color layer and I can erase out where that opening was. And then I can take a new color. Let's do kind of a, a rusty sienna for the beard something like this. It doesn't even matter if these are going to be my final colors. It's important to start separating that. And then I just drop that color in. Right. So if I turn off the white background, you'll see we're filling up the empty space in panels underneath. Now where you start to save time is when you start to figure out your palette. And if I know I want that kind of skull shape for more parts, then I can just steal it. So that's what the, the eyedropper tool is for. So if I wanna get from the Sienna color back to the skull color, I can use the eyedropper and it will select it for me. And I use the magic wand on the black bread layer, the line art layer move that to my flat color layer where it will actually let me drop in color because it's not locked. And then maybe I want to steal the color of the heart and then use that for the tongue or use something close to it for the tongue. I'm just kind of assigning blocks, blocks of color, but then I can also just alter it slightly on the color selector. And this gives me a new color in my palette. And this is why for some digital coloring, you might even put little color swatches off to the side. Now I need kind of a, a deep shadow color for the eye sockets. And maybe something more in the, the cool range. And I'll show you that on the black bread layer, I can select multiple shapes as well. I have contiguous and anti-alias on. I can click inside that eye shape and hold down shift, add that eye shape, add the, the nose section. Is there anything else I want? Add, no, but I don't want to add that. That was a mistake, Command Z. Uh, maybe add, the club here, try making that dark, just see how that works. Maybe this little loop here. Maybe inside the eye here. Maybe the blade here. <laughs> Maybe the shadow here. Then the shadow here. Then the shadow here. And all of these can be filled in with the same color all at once. 
So I go to flat color, I pick it, I drop it in, and it will fill every area I selected. And if I turn off my line art, all of those flats are nicely separated. So at any time, if I want to change it now, I can just use the paint bucket tool directly. Like say I want to make this blue and it will just change it. So that's how we do flat color and drop it in. The hard thing is coming up with a good color palette. And so what I usually recommend is having inspiration instead of trying to just use the color selector on its own, right? Like if I want gold, I can find something that kind of looks like gold and use it, but I'm, I'm selecting from millions of colors without any kind of context, and I'm just trying to fill up white space. And that can be difficult. So instead, I have my inspiration images, these tattoos. and especially this playing card tattoo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this image up as a reference image in Photopea, and you can do this in Photoshop as well. So I'm gonna open this tattoo image. Okay, then I can toggle between them and I can steal colors from one with the eyedropper tool. I'm gonna to auto tone it a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit. But it's what I like about this tattoo design is it shows pretty simple coloring pretty directly. And so for the gold of the knife, which I very much based my knife on, right? I can just use the dropper tool, click it, and it's in my foreground color. And then I can just drop that in. And this blue, I really like that. So eyedropper tool, select the blue. Where might I use that? maybe on this portion here. So go to my black bread layer, click on the contained shape I wanna fill, click on the paint bucket, go to my flat color layer and drop it in. I think I wanna fill the spade in with that as well. Oh, make sure you're on the black, your line art layer before you make your selections. <laughs> We're able to fill up the background. And if I try to paint on my line art layer, it will say it's locked. So in digital coloring, I try to only leave the layer that I am wanting to add color to. That's the only layer I leave unlocked. And then I really like this pink. See if I can select that, I can. Maybe try filling the diamond with that. And that's a slightly different pink than this one, right? And so at any time I can just say, oh, I like that pink, I'm gonna drop that into here and change it. It actually doesn't look all that different. <laughs> all right. Now, once it's contained within the flat color layer, once you don't have a selection contained anymore. Yeah, I like the darker. Then you can color just within the shapes themselves. You don't even need your black line art layer anymore, right? but you have to make sure that they're all contained. So I can't add pink there. 
without feeling 